guys. Today we're gonna to be installing some brake lines in the Celica. So uh, I've been trying to juggle projects here, um, as you can tell in the background. So I'm gonna devote some time to working on this guy today. So let me show you the parts we got and we'll go from there. All right guys, this is what we got here. Uh, this is the brake line I'm gonna be using. It is copper. Uh, it's much easier to manipulate and get kind of everything straight. So I like using this with flares also, it makes things way easier. The only difference is I hate using the coiled up ones. Uh, this is way cheaper, but the ones that you buy that are straight, you're better off using that, I guess, for sections because they'll be pinned straight. Rather, rather than me like trying to manipulate this to make it straight and it's kind of a pain in the ass, but hopefully our lines are gonna be pretty short because I wanna try to hide everything. So we'll just see how that goes as we, uh, as things unfold. Some fittings for that also. Um, this is the brake booster for the, oh, this is the old brake booster. This thing is gigantic and heavy, which I'm sure weight doesn't matter, but it's just huge, huge. So uh, let me show you one that I got. This one's been sitting here for a while. This one came from Techno Toy. I mean, you can tell the difference with this thing. It's like a toy compared to this monster. Um, I test fitted this already earlier and everything seems to be good. These are a little off. So I'll show you guys what to do about that. Um, it does fit in there. You just have to kind of modify this, this little plate here. And this plate we'll, we will be using also. So that is that. Put this here and this can go on the ground. Moving on to our master cylinder. I went with Willwood again. And this is a remote reservoir kit. So it uses twin separate uh, reservoirs. I'll be using billet ones. I still have to order those, but I wanted to have it in my hand so I can run my lines and get everything set. Plastic ones that comes with are here. We won't be using those. Um, and I went with a one inch piston, if that's what it's called in there, to match my brakes. So we'll keep this here and I'll show you our proportion valve is here from Amazon. Uh, I, I got the cheaper one because this is just a a valve in here, it's nothing really fancy. Same specs, it's generic as hell, but Willwood makes the identical one. I think it's like a hundred bucks or 80 bucks. This was $20. I'm gonna push my luck here and I have a feeling everything will be fine, but uh, if not, it's easy enough to swap out. And here's our bracket for that as well. This came from Willwood also, so. This kit was kind of hard to piece together. Um, you can buy everything together as a kit, but if you buy things separately, you get a little better deal. Here's our old booster. And I'll show you guys what I did to the spacer. Make sure to try to keep this little paper gasket intact. That way you can locate your holes. As you can tell, I like, punched other holes in it. So this is what we did here. Uh, you can see this. I just kind of put it over it. Gonna mark my holes and how I got the holes. I kind of eyeballed it and kind of just went like this. And then I opened the holes big enough so we can kind of have room to play in there. But this is just a spacer. It doesn't really do too much, I think. And if it's not exactly in the right spot, it doesn't matter. You'll notice that when we, when we get underneath. All right guys, so let's go ahead and mount this uh, master cylinder to our brake booster so we're not fumbling around in the car trying to figure things out. I wanna show you guys how to adjust this um, adjuster screw. So this is a tool I found online that is makes your life way easier. Um, it's clearly marked what you need to do. <clears throat> and this is where it's from. I'll post a little link below so you can go on and get it. Um, it's pretty good. So this kit is kind of universal. So they supply this little um, one here that's the flat. Just kind of stick it in there, and then you can use different applications. So how you adjust this, this slides, and we're gonna find the depth of our master cylinder. So you just kind of put it here. Make sure your surfaces are flat. Kind of like that. Tighten it up, go over to our booster. You can tell that it's not, gotta adjust that thing in more. Looks pretty good. So I'm gonna put like a dab of blue Loctite on here just so it doesn't swivel out because I took that locking nut out. Just go 
I'll put this on like this. It should come into contact with that slightly. And that's it. Tighten everything on. Let's go put it in the car. Gonna be a tight fit here. Oh yeah, we just made it there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's pretty close. Uh, probably quarter inch, maybe eighth inch. So let's go tighten down everything in the back and then I'll find out where our uh, proportion valve is gonna go. So I'm kind of mocking things up here. I don't know if this is gonna fit or not. I don't think so. So our proportion valve is designed to go here and it's not really gonna fit here. Plus if it did fit here, who cares? Because there's no way of me getting any Kind of fitting on here to hook my brake line to so probably to mount this somewhere over here i'll make my own bracket probably this way take the sensor off we won't be needing that so it'll go somewhere here i could mount it back here possibly but i'd like to avoid avoid the heat <clears throat> because our lines then will be kind of going down here to it on this side i'd like for them to come over here Yeah, let's figure that out real quick. All right, that's it. I cut everything nice to make it kind of like uh, like the other one was. Put it in and see how, uh, how everything goes. That looks pretty good. So now, next thing is to get our brake lines over to them. I want to keep everything real tight. This one's going to be pretty tight. These are the kind of factory ones that they had, or the ones with this kit. And this, these are just tight. I just wanted to check the 90. So I'm gonna go ahead and flare one end of my other ones. Put this little fitting on and I'll make my 90. Flared everything out. I'll show you guys how I do that in a little bit, but I just wanted to get started on one to see where we're at here. So this is the tightest we can go with this here. It's pretty close. I'll show you from the front, maybe you guys can see it. It's pretty close, but I don't know, I may, I may end up modifying this. If I can get this a little lower, that'd be cool. Let's check that out, I guess, see what's up. All right, so we gained a little bit. Not, uh, not too much there, but I'll take anything I can get. It's a little better. As you can see, still super close, 
but um, I don't know. Working with what we got here. So now we'll finish bending the lines. I think I'm gonna go under here instead and, and come out of here. So I'll keep these lines all contained to this one. So when I take everything off, I can take this off as one unit with all the lines already connected. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we've got everything mocked up here. We're gonna get, gonna get started. Um, I'm gonna start on this guy first for portion valve. So we'll start from here. This guy's gonna go to here, so. All right, guys, this is where we're at. Um, I did stop early. There's one more bend to do, as you can tell. So the reason I stopped there is because I won't be able to have enough meat to grab onto it, to flare it, if um, I make that tight 90. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put our fitting on. We're gonna flare it. We're gonna make that 90. And then as soon as we make that tight 90 like this, if it doesn't fit exactly or we need more length, um, I accounted for that by leaving some radiuses, some 90s bigger than other ones. See how this is tight, there's no wiggle room here. That one's finished. So afterwards, if that one doesn't really fit, what I'll do is I'll change the radius of this, meaning I can, I can move this whole thing in or out according to the radius. So I'll show you that. Let's go ahead and flare this um, and with our fitting and I'll show you my, uh, my take on some little tricks to make life a little easier. Okay, first things first, what we're gonna do is, obviously you saw me cut my pipe, try to get a new one. This one's super old, um, but it does a trick. Now, you're not gonna get a super clean cut with this. Um, and as you can tell, let me see if I can get the camera to zoom in here. You can kind of see that when it cut through, it kind of left a little edge on the inside. So I usually take, instead of deburring it in there, you can kind of thin the walls out at the top. It's not what you wanna do, so. I try to take a little drill bit and just kind of like work it in there and eventually it'll go all the way in. It's kind of hard to do with the camera in front of me, but there we go. So now you can tell that we're clear. We still have an edge at the top that's kind of on an angle. So I take my little file, I'm gonna file this down so it's nice and flat. And then again with our drill bit just to clean things out again. Next thing we're gonna do is take our file again and smooth out anything that we have on the edge. I think that most of your flare depends on your prep work, so that's that. You want a straight edge on this guy. You don't want it on an angle because when you mushroom it out, it'll go to one side or the other side. So if you have it even, it'll smush right down. Take a little bigger drill bit and kind of just slightly bevel the edge. I'm talking barely anything. And we're ready to go. Let's get our fitting so we don't forget that. You'll notice also if you have any like weird edges here, your fitting won't go on that, that smooth. So I'm gonna clean it up. Put it in here. Now this is a cheap kit from like Vance or maybe your local auto store. Um, they're garbage, but if you know how to use them and manipulate them in your favor, they will work wonders. I've had this kit for a very long time and it's good, but like I said, you have to screw around a little bit. This is the little piece that you need. They tell you to push it in there. Um, this is your best friend also. Put a little oil on the edge in the center. So you want this thing sticking up, probably the width of this right here. So you put it flat, it's a little low, work it up. That's probably pretty good. Just 
Now take your piece, make sure there's no debris around anywhere. And just stick it right on in there. The other tool here, you wanna do the same. A little oil around here, just so, just so everything will spin nice and nothing will bind up. Once you have it semi-tight, you can still kind of move it. Put it to your, you know, you don't want it like this because as you tighten, this thing will move and then your flare will be off. So you can kind of turn it so it hits the edge, kind of like that. Let it kind of find its way. Now we just tighten everything up. You don't need to go fast. Just take it easy and just look at what's going on. It should seat down like that. And I'll show you what's left. This tool, this little die here is, sometimes gets hard to take out of there. You gotta kind of work it out a little bit. So what you're left with is a bubble flare. And what we're doing now is like invert it to make a double flare. So essentially the pipe will be double layered and uh, stronger. Take your tool again, and it's and you got some oil on it. And we do the same with this, and go super slow um, because this can tend to crack sometimes. And if you put too much pressure on it, they'll just explode. You'll see it; they get all cracked. So just take your time, and it should flare out nicely. Okay, let's see what we got. So now it's kind of jagged. Take the file, just kind of smooth things out. And then we take it out of here. So this is what we're left with. So it looks pretty good to me. Now, next thing you want to do is file these little ridges down. There is a little bump here you're gonna notice on the flare itself. You wanna get rid of that too, just so when the fitting fits up against it, it'll fit nice. You know, and start to do what it needs to do, clamp down. Just right here. The other one, where are you? Right there. It's a little tedious, but it pays out afterwards when you put things in your car and it doesn't leak. Because if it does leak, it's a huge disaster. Your paint is gonna be all shitty on your engine bay and better safe than sorry type of thing, you know? Okay, we need just a little length. You can see we're about, I don't know, what's that quarter inch off? So what I'm gonna do now is tighten up this 90 a little more, and I'm gonna move this over, and it'll, as, as in change the radius here, and that's gonna shift this whole thing over. So first, this is pretty tight already. We're like right on the edge here of getting it out of shape, kind of the same as this one. So, I'm probably going to just kind of manipulate this bend and it'll shift everything over. Let's give it a shot and see if it'll work. I think we're all right. This has to kind of stretch a little bit, but it's nothing too crazy. Get that right out of here. There you go. It's not too bad. We'll straighten some things out afterwards, but I think we're okay. It's a little funky just because of what it is. 
it's a weird this is at an angle you know so let's go on to the next one um i think we're pretty good probably just going to mimic the same thing uh and then i may come over instead of having both separated i want them kind of together all right guys we got away lucky this time um what i didn't realize making the bracket um the lines are now different from before because this guy is backwards uh anyway the function is the same but the lines obviously need to be switched around so here i am you know going like this with them and it's not right we switched it over uh we didn't have to make too many adjustments on them everything worked pretty well actually so this is not too far off but if if i were switching these two maybe yeah so anyway let's continue on and pay attention a little more how about that So this is where we're at. Did pretty good. Uh, everything looks pretty good. I had to come over this one, uh, which was sort of a challenge. This one could have been a little better, but since we kind of screwed up in the first place with our locations, um, hey, it is what it is, but look, not too bad. I tried to get everything symmetrical and perfect, but for what I'm working with here, I think we're, I think we're okay by hand. So, all right, let's go put this thing in and see, uh, hopefully we get some clearance here. As you can see, there's enough clearance. We're good to go. Um, we're working with what we got here. So let's just see how it runs. It's close, but I don't know. We're just gonna have to see what's up. Uh, the lines are good. I'd like to see this a little, I'd like to see that one. I can't even point to it. This one I'd like to see a little straighter. So this 90 and this 90, maybe I'll straighten out to get rid of that bow. Uh, this one on the other hand is left with what we got. Uh, since I screwed up and put them in the wrong wrong location, you know, got a little tighter, but whatever. It works. It will work. It's fine. So I'll take those off, straighten them out, sand everything and get them finished nice, nice. And that's it. Now let's move on to our fittings and trying to get from what's out here in here. Worked out pretty good. So um, now let's work on our clutch master there and see if we can get a line um, on there first. All right, for this one, I think we're gonna use the top one here. It seems to be the um, closest and maybe easiest. 
I might just need like a little 90 bend and we should be good, so. Now let's put everything back together and we can start working on these bottom ones. All right, guys, there you have it. Um, I didn't film too much of this because uh, it's kind of monotonous. But anyway, you got a good idea of what's going on. And let me show you our end result here. So we got, um, pretty happy with everything, how they turned out. This is how everything's gonna be. I still need to bench bleed um, the master cylinder, so we'll do that later. Still waiting on our reservoirs. As soon as those come in, I'll get at that. And this side is finished up. Not too bad, same with the other. Let me show you underneath here. So here's all the lines underneath here. It's kind of hard to see, but um, yeah, looks pretty good. I tried to bend everything as best I could. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with this light. Let me see if I can. There you go. I had to make a little bracket, hold it in place, you know, and then there's my clutch master. It's the best place I can find for it. It's nicely tucked away, uh, but hopefully we can keep our feet off it. I think it'll be all right. I may make a little guard for it, but should be no problem. There's that. I still gotta put the padding in there. And this is our rear line. You know, it goes across here. Oh, my, light, my light's dying. But anyway, once the carpet is, you know, covering things, you know, this will stay down. But let me show you the master over here. So you can tell, let me get the camera in there, you see. So that's what I did, and I left this kind of long, as well as this real big kind of swooping, pretty much in case the engine moves, you know, this will have some wiggle room, you know, flex here if it needs to, as well as here, not, not really big deal. Uh, I may take this off and kind of paint this, kind of looks kind of shitty, but we'll see what happens. All right, that'll about do it. Uh, a lot of work, I was involved in doing this. The brakes, uh, the brake lines underneath are a real pain in the ass to get under there. Uh, but as you can tell, it's well worth it, even though it was a nightmare. So, uh, as you know, there's a ton of work to be done on this thing. So next, we're going to get involved in with the uh, oil catch tank, as well as our coolant overflow. Get those kind of finished up, and then we'll move on to our valve cover to kind of pretty things up. So, all right, guys. Thanks. See you soon.